On the flip side, yeah, Facebook could connect us to other people, could reduce the barriers between our, our minds uh, and actually help us function more collectively uh, in groups, maybe even you know, something towards uh, what I like to think of as group minds, collective consciousness, or, or what people may call the global brain. You know, to the extent that it connects us and helps us see and understand and empathize with what other people are experiencing, um, it will actually bring us closer together and, and start to create a kind of smarter human superorganism, which could be a good thing for the world because, you know, one of the most dangerous thing uh, we're facing right now is, you know, the, the disproportionate ability of individuals to, to do stupid things that have really global effects uh, because of technology amplifying our abilities. So tying us together with groups could actually sort of help to dampen that, that risk of individuals having too much power. Uh, and in the same respect, it may dampen the effect of governments having too much power. The ability for humans to, to join in groups and understand and think as groups is one of the greatest forces that shapes us historically. And, and Facebook could enable that. So, you know, I, I definitely um, look forward to that and hope that, um, you know, we see more of that happen uh, in the future. I, I also think that, you know, with regard to how Facebook um, sort of impacts the global ecosystem, you know, one of the things we really have to think about the most uh, is, is economics and how Facebook will impact our economies. The, the rise of Facebook credits, if they're widely adopted and, and become something that's used on mobile devices all over the developing world and, and the rest of the world, uh, is really something... Um, that we have to pay close attention to. It could really become the first global currency. It could become uh, a currency that moves other currency markets uh, and really shapes economies.